If you're planning a trip to visit the Louvre Museum, my first recommendation is to buy your ticket ahead of time. You can get a timed entry ticket directly off their website and you'll avoid standing in this hour plus long line. If you show up with your timed entry ticket, simply walk past all these people, find the timed entry line within 15 minutes of your entry time and get in the much shorter timed entry line. After a short wait, you'll go in, you'll go through security, and then you're free to wander this entire museum and all the priceless, countless works of art. Regarding the timed entry on this visit, the crowd you see at the beginning was the 11 a.m. crowd. I would normally go first thing in the morning, but because this was the second day of my trip, I did not want to jam straight out of bed early and try and make a 9 a.m. museum opening. Instead, I set my alarm had time to get a nice amount of rest, grab a cup of coffee and a croissant, and make my leisurely way to the museum for an 11 a.m. ticket. If you're a fan of medieval tapestries, don't miss this gigantic hall full of 12 foot tall tapestries. It's called the Hunt of Maximilian. There are 12 of them, one for every month of the year, and each one depicts a hunt scene for that month. I spent so much time in this room looking at these tapestries, and if you look close at each scene, you will find something going on in the scene that's interesting, like there's someone playing tug of war with a dog in the corner or something funny happening. So definitely look these up if you love tapestries. These are just stunning. Something else to definitely keep in mind with this museum is the hours it is open. This is closed on Tuesdays. It closes at six all the days of the week except Friday. It's open until 9.45. So if you'd like to skip some of the day crowds, although you're never gonna find a quiet time at the Louvre, but a little quieter, you could plan to go Friday afternoon late, wandered in the evening and stay all the way until 9.45. So you get lots of time and it will be a little quieter. This means you can also see that gorgeous pyramid lit up at night when you leave. If you leave through the mall entrance, out through the carousel, you'd have to go back around to the front, but don't miss the pyramid. I also managed to stumble across this Louis XIV bedroom, as well as Marie de Medici's embroidery covered box. This was stunning, gold embroidery. So many things to see here. If you love the intricate, tiny workmanship of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance time period, you'll find lots to see. I'm not sure what I was looking at here, but I stumbled across this boy and turtle, and I think the turtle is wondering about his life choices. But right after that, the Napoleon III apartments, which I did not know existed here. This is just an amazing example of the opulence of this time period, although I think it needs more gold. What do you think? More gold. We could use more gold right here. Another beforehand trick here is to make a note before you go and write down the things you want to see, and then go to their interactive search page at collection. Dot Louvre dot fr. Type what you're looking for into their search. It will catalog through the 490,000 entries, show you what you're looking for and where to find it. Once I had my list in hand of what I wanted to see and where the rooms were located, I made myself a chronological walking map. The rooms are all clearly numbered, although you may find yourself ducking around corners and in and out of hallways looking for a certain room. I had a few times I got turned around trying to find something, but there are maps spaced throughout the museum where you can reorient yourself if you need to. Of course, you can just start at the beginning of this museum and wander at will, but I found without a plan when I did that, I missed things that I knew were in the museum and I had missed them after the fact. Although I did stumble on this dining room and I wouldn't have known that was there and this table, which this was smooth as glass, inlaid stone. Also would have missed Napoleon's throne. So wandering is good, but I did want to have a plan to find things like his personal service for tea. His gorgeous little box of travel wear for when he's on the road. So definitely make a list of things you want to see. I did make a list and I had to search a bit and duck around corners to find a specific room because I was looking for Marie Antoinette's toiletry set. It was a very large space, but I didn't get a lot of pictures, but this was just one of the most moving things to see. This was just such an enjoyable day. I spent about five hours wandering just two of the three wings of this museum. I started in the Richelieu wing and then I went into the Sully. I didn't go into the Denon wing because everything I wanted to see was in these other two wings. Another trick I learned on this trip is when moving between the wings, do not make the mistake I made of going back down the escalator into that main foyer area. It's full of people and as I 
turned and wanted to go back up an escalator to the Sully Wing, it was backed up with a giant crowd being held back and allowed through only a few people at a time because of the crowds. So um, I just turned around and popped back up a staircase and continued across the upper level and into the Sully Wing because I did not want to get stuck in that line. I hope this will help you planning your next visit. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.